And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano, get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Corey Sandin. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup here right next to Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. And we have a great guest for you today. From Fisherman's Landing and the Pacific Dawn, we have Carl Schmidt. It's going to be a great time here talking fishing. There is great fishing talk to talk about, too. So you stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hi, this is Pete, and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new 14-week fishing event from CCA California. It's the Star Tournament starting Memorial Day weekend and continuing through Labor Day. You could win one of 10 grand prizes, including a new special edition 18-foot center console Parker boat, powered by a 150 Yamaha outboard. It includes a trailer, and it's all thanks to West Coast Marine Service and Costa Mesa. There's also a chance to win cool weekly prizes throughout the summer. All you do is catch a qualifying fish and then enter to win through the Fishing Chaos app. From bass to bluefin, you can enter up to two qualifying fish per category per day. Just as importantly, the Star Tournament supports CCA California and the fight for your right to fish. To sign up and check out the Star rules, visit CCACalifornia.org. It's only $40 to enter for CCA California members. Don't miss out on the Summer of the Star. This is Captain Brandon Nelson from Lucky Bee Sport Fishing. Our dynamic fishery here on the West Coast is home to some of the most iconic game fish that swim the salty world. We demand tools designed to perform flawlessly and deliver the upper hand in any situation. That's why I use and recommend the all-new G. Loomis IMX Pro Offshore Series of Rods. It's a full lineup of purpose-built 20 to 80 pound class rods. I have been fortunate enough to be working with G. Loomis on the IMX Pro for some time to help develop the actions we need here on the West Coast, and they nailed it. The G. Loomis multi-taper design technology adds material where the blank is likely to fail and subtracts material where it won't. A sea guide train and Fuji reel seat complement a battle on grip that offers extreme fatigue fighting comfort. They have been helping my passengers on Lucky Bee Sport Fishing land some amazing fish and now they are ready for you. The new G. Loomis IMX Pro Offshore Rod Series at your local Shimano or G. Loomis deal. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on this. Uh, it's a beautiful Easter morning, actually. Yes, happy Easter to Skies everybody. Sky's clearing. Yeah, it is. I wonder, imagine the Easter sunrise services were nice and dry. On and, target. Uh, beautiful, yeah. So very, very good. Happy Easter to everybody out there. And happy Easter to you, Carl. Happy Easter. How's everyone doing? Uh, everything is great. And uh, boy, oh boy, uh, before the storms, uh, the calm before the storms, we had some pretty amazing fishing we on had Fisherman's Landing, right? Right. The last few weeks has been pretty good. You know, it's not uh, like wide open, but it's it's good fishing. You know, on that bluefin, uh, a lot of that ninety to one hundred and thirty pound bluefin on so the, crazy. the nighttime jigs and. Um, some daytime fish, you know, Mike on the dawn was out. He had six or seven fish, not this past last trip, but the trip before that on the kite, you know, in the afternoon. Yeah. And it was good fishing, you know. And then the Liberty has just got their first trip out of the year uh, to the islands on Friday. Good rock fishing and stuff. Great. Uh, they see any yellow? I don't think so, but, I mean, it's right before the storm. But, yeah. you know, he had really good uh, rock fishing. He had 70 reds <laughs> and 100 mixed rock fish, a couple of lean cod, a couple of sheephead or whatever. So our season is upon us. Yeah. Now, uh, Mike uh, from the Pacific Dawn was supposed to make it today. He wasn't able to make it. Yep. Uh, but you're here not only representing Fisherman's Landing, but you're also involved with the Pacific Dawn. So you're representing Pacific Dawn. Yeah, there's a couple. And of you came bearing gifts, I might add, <laughs> yeah. from, from the Pacific Dawn. Yeah, so, so we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, 
couple new roles this year. I'm helping a couple of the boats do a little more than just managing the landing stuff with the Pegasus. I'm helping them out also. Uh, the Pacific Dawn, Mike is like, he's a brand new owner. He's getting his feet wet. So I'm helping him do all pretty much all the behind the scenes stuff like that. So uh, booking his charters, just taking care of all the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, with the Pegasus, I'm doing the charters also with oh, them. Are you? So, yeah, uh-huh. And now are they sis- they're not sisters? No, the sister ship for the Pegasus is the Fortune. Is the Fortune, so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so uh, the Pacific Dawn, how many uh, passengers are carried on that? Uh, up to 19 people, like on an overnight or a day and a half. Then as we go longer on the trips for like a two-day trip, we like 17, 18 people. Uh-huh. Uh, we can do two-and-a-half-day trips. We like 15 people. And we'll do three-day trips with... Uh, as long as it's 10 people or less, you know, it's not the biggest boat in the fleet. Uh, we don't uh, carry a ton of bait, bait, so we try to keep it like, hey, if we have 10 people or less, we can do it. Or, you know, we can we can three man day. three day trip. Yeah. You know, it's, so that's it's, kind of the schedule for the Pacific Donna's day and a half to two and a half day, day, day trips. Yeah. But primarily day and a half? Uh, during the summer, like from here on out, it'll be mostly two day trips. Mike really likes that early uh, morning departure, like around 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. He loves that nighttime fishing. I mean, uh, <laughs> Um, he he to be honest with you i mean he is one of the most uh, go getters i've seen in a long time you know wow. him and gavin you know there's only a handful of guys that like they sure. they go at they get at it you know yeah and like even to a fault at one point some points where mike like he has a sticker on the in the wheelhouse. Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> and he yeah. does not. I mean, he came in at noon the other day, but it paid off. You know, he had like it was really tough fishing. He was down there in the zone at ten o'clock. He's like, I'm on him. I'm on him. He got nineteen fish. I think majority of that fish was. 110 to 140 pounds. You know, there was a couple of smaller ones. I think his big one was like 170. So crazy. Wow. Yeah, really amazing the size of the fish yeah. this spring, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is spring now, finally. I mean, they I were know. catching them in the winter, but <laughs> it doesn't feel like spring. it. Yeah, I know. So. Yeah, that's yeah, from the weather. But, but amazes me through. We've had a weather event what every five to eight days, every like a, we- like a major blow. And it's still there. It's yeah, waiting. Yeah, every weekend. And the plane is seeing a ton of fish, you know. They, some of these guys have just hired the plane on their own to go looking. I think if the plane will be up Monday, they're going to look in U.S. waters. Because when this fish first showed up, it was right on the border, you know, just below Cortez Tanner Bank, you know, 60-mile uh, bank, you know. And then that stuff kind of seemed to slide back down. But I think uh, I was talking to Frank, and he said, yeah, we're going to try to get the plane up and start looking out by San Clemente out to the west uh-huh. and see if that fish is out there again. Because some of those guys up north, I saw uh, up by San Francisco, San Francisco. Francisco caught a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. those were nice ones. You know, I, from the pictures, I think they were like 150 pounds. Sure. You know, it's an amazing spread of fish right now. Really good. And yeah. when Mike first found this fish, because it was Mike and Allie are, they're, they're the only two boats that were out there fishing. From the Polaris Supreme. Polaris yeah. Supreme. Yep. Uh, they saw some of that small great fish, you know, 30 to 50 pounders. And that stuff has disappeared. I mean, it's all big fish. You know, I would say above majority of that fish is probably a legit 70 pounds or bigger. That's mm-hmm. crazy. But yeah. the 30-pounders haven't gone anywhere. They just kind of move somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, when you only have two or three boats, you know, it's been the Tribute, uh, the Pacific Dawn, and the Supreme fishing the last three weeks, and they're not getting out every day, you know? Right. So it's hard to keep track of that stuff. That's why, I mean, like I said, these guys have got the plane up to kind of keep an eye on where that fish is heading, where it's going. Luckily, with today's technology, you got terrafin and all that, yeah. and they could keep Keep track of it, but sometimes you know that fish splits up, and they've just been on this big fish. Where that smaller great fish is, is who knows right now. Right. Uh, I know the guys that it's called blackfin out of Ensenada. I think they had some uh, fish off of Ensenada, huh. and that looked like that 60 pound great fish and stuff uh, earlier this week. You know, between the two storms. So the Pacific Dawn is it mo- primarily a charter boat, or Almost, do you do open party too? Uh, mostly charter boat. You know, th- this time of year normally he went up to Ventura fishing sea bass and rockfish. Huh. Uh, th- this year it just didn't work out between us and the landing, which is fine, no problem. And Mike wanted to try to build something down here so he luckily when he bought the boat from pat cavanaugh the I me mean, pat had that boat in great shape i mean yeah. pat did an awesome job and really kept that boat in top notch so there hasn't been a lot of boat work to do so we did the few mike did the few things he needed to do got the uh engine room all tuned up and everything and then he hit the ground running back and tried to start running some colonnette trips he ran i think two colonnette trips 
then went offshore, found that bluefin, and it's been bluefin ever since, since February, you know, mid-February. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so, and then the the Pegasus right next uh, next door to the Pacton, uh, that's a that's also a charter boat, all which charter I do boat. some uh, open party yeah, tours. Yeah, springtime and fall, yeah. you know, all these bo- you know, I mean, for all the charter boats, you know, your main charter season is June, July, August, September. In October and November, there's not a lot of charters going on in, in the springtime, you know. So, like, come April 5th, I mean, Friday night, April 5th, <laughs> I think I have seven boats leaving all open party boats between the Fortune, the Pegasus, the Tomahawk, the Condor. Wow. Uh, That's this Friday. Yeah, I mean, we'll have a lot of boats. And um, I think every boat will get out pretty well, you know. Yeah. Uh, Are there any spots open on AIM? Condor has a few, and the Tomahawk has a few. Yeah. The Pegasus is sold out. The Dawn is sold out. I think the Shogun's online also. Uh, last time I looked, he had two or three. I don't know if those are still available or not. And then um, uh, the Tomahawk. Condor and the Tomahawk still has some spots open. Tomahawk is looking great. Yeah, and Dave has done a tremendous amount of work on that boat, right? Yeah, all these guys this year. I mean, Mike got lucky with very little boat work because Pat's done such a great job. But yeah. between the Pegasus, the Tomahawk, the Pacific Queen, the Condor, I mean, the boat work down here this year has been unbelievable. Yeah. All these tarps. I mean, the Pegasus has done a repower. Uh, Gavin and the boys on the Queen, they've been uh, put two new fish holds in, new bait tank in, uh, redid the back of the deck. I mean, those guys have been New busting. Tank. Yeah, they, it's beautiful. I just went down there, uh, checked it out. I mean, about the same size, maybe slightly bigger, but I would say about the same size. On, on which boat? On the Pacific on, Queen. On Pacific mm-hmm. Queen? Yeah. Nice. Those guys have been working really hard since, I mean, they, their last trip was Thanksgiving. They probably started December 1st, but boat work type of deal, and they've been at it all ever since. And then their first trip is the following week in December 10th. Or April, April 10th. A- April 10th, yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow. A lot yeah. going on at Fisherman's a Land. Lot of, a lot of boat work this year. Yeah, yeah. and so it's but but it's game time now. It's game time. Everyone's yeah. pretty much ready. They're wrapping things up, and everyone's eager to go fishing again. They're, I know. We, t- we talked about yesterday that the searcher is ending their last uh, natural history trip, yep. and they're going to start fishing uh, May 11th. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't be shocked if there's uh, the demand for it. Those guys will start. I mean, I don't think start they early. have to start early. You know, they'll try to get some day and a half or two day trips up er, early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So it, it a lot. And what about some of the long-range boats that maybe some early season stuff uh, that uh, pops up there? Yeah, I know the Shogun added a whole bunch of trips. Some of the trips are being booked through Fisherman's Landing. Some are being booked through the office, through Jen. Um, you could just look at the Fisherman, or go to the Shogun's website. It'll tell you where to go or how to book yeah, them and everything ones? like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, the Royal Star added a new two-day trip. He Tim told me I think it's mid April. You could go to the Royal Stars website and see that new two day trip. I'm sure there's pro- he just posted it uh, a couple days ago, so there's probably still a couple spots available for that. RP shuts down for their maintenance. Uh, they just they leave tomorrow on their last 18 day trip, wow. their last long trip. XL comes back from dry dock. They're in for a week, then they leave on a long trip. Uh, searcher, like you just said. And who else am I? I feel like I'm missing one. Yeah. Well, uh, John, it's like, it's well a, Islander's going to start up. Yep, Islander will start up mid-April again. April. Mid-April. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yep. then the schedule for the Liberty? Yep. He's full uh, every day now from departing at 530, fishing the Connaught Islands. Full-day trips. Full-day trips, yep. And, you know, he does have some day-and-a-halves and two-day trips kind of sprinkled through the uh, right. the, the year. He has got we, the less we have ta- two of those. Two yeah. less talk hookup trips. He's got a couple day-and-a-halves, ultra-limited load stuff, like limited... Uh, I think 28 people or something like that on that boat, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, now, ours are ultra-limited, low limited to 25. Five, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have, uh, I believe, uh, one in September, one in October. Correct, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and mm-hmm. there's still space available. Yep. But mm-hmm. they're going. They're going. Yeah. So just check Fisherman's Landing website. You go to the front page. You can choose whatever your favorite boat is. Hop on it and go fishing. How many for day at the docks? One week from today, hard to believe that. That's crazy. Yeah, are there going to be a lot of boats in t- in town? I think there will be a lot of boats coming in. Coming Sunday in, morning. yeah. Because like I said, I, a lot of boats are leaving Friday afternoon, Friday morning, and all of them are re- scheduled to return Sunday morning. Okay, so it's going to be. So, so how's that going to work? Where they, <laughs> if these guys are really going to nail those big fish, is there? Uh, is it going to be room for to put all those <laughs> fish out on that, at that scale? There, 
everyone's just got to breathe through their nose yeah. and just say, hey, you know, we're just going to have to just deal with it, you know? Yeah. But but that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's, it's Day at the Docks is yeah. literally if a you come, day at the docks yeah. and, and, and meant to celebrate yeah. exactly what's coming in. If you come down early and the Shogun has limits or good fishing in the Condor, the Tomahawk, the Pegasus, the Dawn, uh, and whoever else is going to be running, I mean, how do you not get excited for that and get ready for to sure. go fishing? If that, that that doesn't make you want to go fishing, we're watching all these local boats come in and yeah. back in with, who knows? It's a problem. Call it 50 to 200 pound fish. I mean, I'm sure guys will be walking in the office. I want to go. I, Sign me up right I, now. I, take I my money. I want to one of these. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. Yeah, and and, and it long, long range forecast looks, I mean, we're supposed to get a storm on Friday, but the weekend looks pretty darn good. Yeah. So. Yeah, so. And, and hopefully finally minimizing, right? Like yeah. typically in March, we get a front come through right. and we predict uh, three quarters of an inch. We yeah. usually get a quarter. Yeah. yeah. But this time, I mean, we had, it, we had an inch and a quarter at San Diego Lindbergh yeah. Airport. I yeah. mean, just. <laughs> And more to come today. <laughs> but I think, you know, the one yeah. on Friday, hopefully we start to minimize. Yeah. yeah. You know? so, the, rain, I don't care. It's the wind that bugs yes, me. Yes, exactly. So, like, my backyard's flooded right now from yesterday. I live <laughs> up north there, and it was just, like, yeah. There's yeah, an inch, start- inch of rain in my backyard right now. When we finished uh, Let's Talk Hook Up yesterday, it was raining as hard as I've ever seen it. It was yeah. dumping, yeah. Pete. It was I'll, dumping. I'll just say it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was dumping. dumping. Yeah. But... Let's get through that, and the good news is there's fish around. Yeah, it's springtime. This yeah. is just what we have to deal with. You know, the storm comes and goes. I wish it was on Mondays and Tuesdays instead right. of during the weekends. But for the guys that can go fishing during the week, there's trips available. Opportunity. All opportunity. To, and normally during the week, the the loads are a little lighter, you know. So if you can get off on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, go fishing, you know. We're, we're so fortunate. I mean, you think about Southern California weather and we're so spoiled, man. Yeah, we deal yeah. with such a beautiful ocean. Even when it blows 25 or 35 and it's, you know, blows out, it clears yeah. up within 12 hours yeah, and yes. we're back to normalcy. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're so spoiled with a hundred, 200 pound bluefin in our backyard. Exactly. And, like, I mean, come on. Yeah. Now, did Taro see any sign of yellows at the Coronado Islands? You know, Anibal ran the trip. I, okay. He didn't tell me one way or another. It was just, I'm sure they looked. I don't know how if they made it down the rock pile. I know a few weeks ago that's where that fish was. Yeah. But there's been sign of yellowtail up and down the coast here. Sure. So, I mean. Water uh, conditions are ideal right now. Yeah. And the thing with the Coronado, if the I, the conditions aren't good at the islands, blink your eye and they, they'll change that fast. Yep. You, you could go fish pukey or the gun site or underneath the lighthouse at 9 o'clock in the morning and it could be blown out, dirty water, cold. You go somewhere else, come back three hours later and it's like... Am I in the same ocean, yeah. the same and place? Yeah. And, and too, without Steve P or without Booger you right. know, on the San Diego, like it, they could have been at the gun site when it was happening at the north end, right? Exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when there's only one boat covering it, yeah. exactly, it's, like eight eight miles away. You know? Yeah, but, exactly. But soon all those guys. I mean, I know uh, Steve Peterson on the Mission Bell has been working on getting out. They've been doing a lot, some boat work and stuff. Yeah. But and then uh, of course uh, San Diego uh, going to be ready to go beginning of May, I believe. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, so it's just Matt. It's just when everyone gets their boat work and Coast Guard buttoned up here, they'll be on the on the water fishing. You know, yeah, so. it's good stuff. Yep. Well, as you can hear, I have a great show lined up for you today, and Carl has brought an Easter gift that'll blow your mind. Here. Right, exactly. Yeah. So what what exactly? I mean, we're get, I know we're giving away a trip on the Pacific Dawn, but how how does that work, Carl? It'll be a day and a half trip on the Pacific Dawn. What, so. Possibly part of a charter that has an extra spot or an open party. Or? It'll be an open party trip. You okay. know. Uh, all the charters, you know, guys call us all the time, like, hey, I want to get on this charter site. Yeah. It's a charter for a particular reason. The guys want to fish th- with themselves or whatever. With, so with there are 10 or 12 guys exactly. and have their group yep. solely to themselves. Correct. So it'll be an open party trip. You know, we'll have plenty of them between now and beginning of July, plenty of opportunity. There's a couple uh, trips uh, we'll have because we did leave a couple dates open for some open party trips to get new people on the boat during the mid-season and stuff like that. Then there will be a lot of opportunity in the fall and stuff like so that. So there it is. Man. Yeah. So, so basically we'll just hook you up with Carl and you say, hey, I want to go this time of the year and Carl will get you on the Pacific Dawn for exactly. a day and a half trip. Yep. Yeah. Plug it in just like that. that? So, Super so easy. one lucky caller, one lucky texter today. One of you, we'll have Carl flip the coin and decide uh, who's getting 
that lucky trip, a day and a half trip on the Pacific Dawn. Super cool. So Not, join. So just one trip. One trip. Or a yeah. caller or a texter. Did I say it wrong? No, no, no. no okay, no, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. I just want to make clear. So that fortunate. We're, yeah, for sure. And so one lucky caller can give us a shout at two one three four three. To 1090, or you can text us via the app. So we're going to give it away to one yep. of those flipping a coin at the end of the show. We're going to be right back with Carl Schmidt from Fisherman's Landing. And when we return on Let's Talk a Kebab, the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. I've had the opportunity to fish many places in many different types of water, but never have I fished a place as much fun as Katmai Lodge in Alaska. Hello, my name is Harold Davis, typically fishing in the ocean, but this is an experience that you have to try for yourself. Fish natural rivers with tens of thousands of fish coming up. And they have all the gear, spinning, bait casting, fly rods, kings, silvers, pinks, sockeyes, and my favorite, the chums. Outstanding food, outstanding accommodations, great service. The lodge is located in the beautiful Katmai National Park, filled with amazing wildlife. Brown bears, moose, eagles, otters, and it has spectacular scenery. And also the fact that the lodge is located right on the Alagnac, River and your boat is just steps away from your room makes it great. Do yourself a favor, call Charmel at 1 800 330 0326 or go online catmy.com. And like Pete says, they will hook you up. Hey everybody, this is Captain Dwayne Diego, four pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker. Then there's a real good reason for it the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy duty industrial strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year. Running and charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair up front honest deal, you need to see West Coast Marine located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. <clears throat> All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And so stoked to be in the world headquarters here. And yeah. Weather's clearing. And we're giving away a day and a half trip on the Pacific Dawn. Like, so cool. That's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, Carl and Mike, for that. We appreciate that. And I guess that's why the phone lines are loading up. Yeah. But we do have one opening. So 213-432-1090. Or you can text us via the app, and we're going to flip a coin. And lucky winner is going to be either a caller or a texter with the yeah. flip of the coin. Yeah, someone's going to get to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Super and and <clears throat> I might add, too, we always say it, uh, we get a ton of texts, and we can only get to so many on the show. Your e- most likely chance, yeah. much higher chance, is to call. I mean, and we, we love the callers are what we grew up on and, yeah. and, and, and created Let's Talk Hook Up. Of course, Adam created the text, and that's added a tremendous thing to the show. But we love to, especially uh, new callers, and it, it, we love to see those phone lines lit up and uh, ready to call exactly. Dr. Carl. So let's go ahead and do that. Cause... Let's do it. How about Daniel? Daniel from Rancho Cucamonga. Good morning and happy Easter, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Happy Easter. My um, question is that if I was going to go, let's say, um, on an overnight, what, what would be the best three setups that I should take? 
I would say for an overnight trip, you definitely would want like a nice 25 pound outfit, you know, a seven or eight foot rod. You don't need a two speed outfit for that, but a, a, a nice 25 pound outfit or a 30 pound outfit, I would have a, like a 40 pound or a 50 pound two speed outfit, you know, uh, that bluefin can bite during the day. I, like a few weeks ago, that stuff was biting really well during the day. Um, you can want some fluorocarbon for sure. Uh, I would have some probably 8-ounce to 12-ounce sinkers for a sinker rig. So that's why I would probably lean more towards a 50-pound outfit than over a 40-pound outfit. So if you want to fish a sinker rig, you can get away with it. And definitely, you definitely want an 80-pound or 100-pound outfit. You know, this bluefin stuff has been getting close enough where you can fish this stuff on an overnight trip at certain times of the year. So those would be the three main outfits, like a nice 25 or 30-pound outfit, a 40 to 60-pound outfit, and a 100-pound outfit. And if you don't have that, uh, that bigger outfit or the meaner middle outfit you can rent them at fisherman's land we have the best uh yeah. rental gear in the business shimano and uh, shimano rods and reels or, or, or in calstar rods yep and, and yeah all brand new spectra we had vince going through all our rental gear this winter uh we put on all that uh colored spectra for from eyes line so it changes color every 100 feet so one of the captains say, hey, drop down 400 feet, you drop down four colors, maybe a little more, and you're in the zone. There's no more guessing. Yeah. You know, like you know where you're at. That's a good thing, yep. yeah. Hey, Daniel, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up. Very busy lines there at 213-432-1090. JP's standing by to take your calls, and we're very grateful for JP working here on Easter Sunday for us. Uh, I have a great text here from Jeff in Mission Viejo. He says, good morning, great show today. Question for Carl, my wife got me a gift card for a three-quarter day trip from Fisherman's Landing. How far in advance can I make a reservation? Uh, as The Liberty schedule is all the way up through November right now. So you can make a – whenever you want to go fishing, call down there. And, hey, I want to go fishing on the Liberty in August 22nd or whatever it is. Do you have to make a note that you have a gift card? Yeah, this is how we do – because, unfortunately, we've been burned a couple of guys not showing up because fishing gets slow, something happens. So what we do is we take a 50% deposit on when you make the reservation. Then you show up. As long as you brought your gift card, we'll give you a 100% refund back onto your card or uh-huh. how, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then you can turn in the gift card, and you're going fishing. You're good. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, but you do need to put a deposit on the trip. Yep. And, and and that way it secures your spot. Correct. Whether you want to go tomorrow or whether you want to go in September. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And the reason we started doing that because guys weren't showing up for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, as long as like, hey, I can't make it now, you call us and we give you a refund back on yeah. your card if you can't make it. And they're now yeah. called full day trips. Full day trips. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So now if you have a gift certificate or card, uh, can you apply it to, if it's a one day trip, can you apply it to like a two day or? If it's a gift certificate, absolutely. The full day trips on the Liberty, he likes to keep them on the Liberty. On so the they, Liberty. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But on like the overnight trip pass and stuff that you might have won through one of the trade shows or donation, let's talk cook up. Let's talk cook up. You could apply those to a day and a half. You just pay the difference. How cool okay. is that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's real nice. So and they never expire. All the uh, trip passes and gift certificates have an expiration date on them. But I had a guy last year bring one that was 13 years old. You know, and we always accept them. We're not. You, we want you to go fishing. You yeah. want you to have a good experience, sure. so we accept them. Super cool, Carl. Yep. Sure, yeah. For good sure. way to do it. All right. Yep. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. All right. How about Robert? Robert calling from Canning Country. Good morning. Appreciate you joining us on Let's Talk Hook Up, Robert. Good morning, and happy Easter to everybody. God's holiday. And uh, the Pacific Dawn. Just, I've had an incredible uh, life. On that boat, spent a lot of awesome trips, and I'm really, really glad to hear that they stayed in San Diego. Can't wait to make a reservation. Awesome, awesome boat, and glad that they have a new skipper. Can't wait to jump on the boat. We appreciate that. You know, Mike's worked really hard, uh, and he, like I said, he's really eager, and he works really hard. He's got his son, Charlie, uh, and I think Charlie's going to have a really bright future in this business also. He ran a couple trips last year, and we got Bradley back from last year. We got He's got a really good crew. Um, you know, they all have some long-range experience, especially with this big fish or kite fishing, which is really helping them out and stuff like that. But we appreciate it. Can't wait to get you back on the boat for sure. 
All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Uh, again, that does free up. 213-432-1090. Just one line open. I want to remind you, be sure to pick up this week's edition of Western Out There News. Loaded with great stuff. Just an impressive bass there from Gibson Lake, yeah. man. Look at the belly on, on that fatty. It reminds oh, yeah. me of Dottie. It was like 14-something. Yeah. yeah. New lake record up there. Yeah. So that was cool. And then, of course, a lot of good pictures of some of those big bluefin. Bluefin caught with the... With the with Look at that, with the uh, Golden Gate Bridge in the background. <laughs> Big old bluefin on the front of that, and the halibut in San Francisco. So much Bay. to read. And lots of good stuff. So check it out, this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Corey, you have a great text, huh? I do, yeah. Kind of cool. It comes from uh, Dave. And Dave, thank you uh, for sending us a text here at Let's Talk Cookup. Dave from San Diego says, kudos to the Pacific Dawn for getting out there and finding fish. Oh, and he was on the Liberty, so I wanted to read this too. He was on the Liberty on Friday, and we saw several schools of yellowtail just south of the islands, but no biters. And he says, a great crew and boat looked very, very good. A question uh, for Carl here is, uh, for the large fish being caught, what were the most popular jigs, and does the Pacific Dawn allow assist hooks or or limit the hooks just to the top or the bottom of the jig? Thanks, Dave. We don't limit, or I should say Mike doesn't limit them, but he does prefer, just like all the other boats, hooks on the top or the bottom. A, it just makes it easier on the fishermen, uh, so you're not pulling that fish in. Like, you got a 60-pounder, it doesn't feel like a 100-pounder. You get that fish in a lot faster and stuff. That, And then it's just a safety thing, but, you know, those guys work around that type of stuff. And um, what was the other part of the question? Uh, just, yeah, you, you, yeah. The, the type of jig. Oh, yeah, and the type of jigs. Jigs, color or type of jig. Has I don't think has mattered. Uh, the Eddie Bomb's been working, you know, the 16 ounce torpedo with the treble hook or assist hooks. The rip rollers worked really well the other night. Uh, the what West size? Coast, rip 400 gram. 400 mm-hmm. gram. Oh, yeah. Uh, the big ones. Yep. And the West Coast jig. Uh, I don't know what their name, but, with, but the West Coast jigger type of jigs have been yeah. working really well, also. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So those cool. have been the. I, and I think the reason those are the most popular ones is just those are the popular jigs right now. So sure. that's what everyone goes to. You know, if you threw a butterfly, jig, Mike said literally, you could have thrown a butterfly jig down there. You could have thrown. Uh, Carl, all you have to JP. say is the Eddie bomb. I mean, what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a the, torpedo sinker with if, a hook on it. If the Eddie bomb's working, I think uh, anything is a good work. I haven't fished anything else in the last year and a half besides that. The uh, Eddie bomb. The Eddie bomb. That's yeah. your go-to. That's crazy. It's easy to wind through the water and it sinks down really fast and it's just simple. It's just yeah. n- n- and they bite it. And they bite it. Yeah. For whatever reason, bluefin are dumb enough to bite a torpedo sinker, and that's what I like to use. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing I'll note with the Eddie bomb is you want to make sure it's a it, it's not it's just wired a stand, through. It's wired th- all the way through, Correct. right? Yeah. It's not just a standard torpedo Correct. sinker. The one thing I've noticed, and but you definitely want to double check. It seems like if you buy a torpedo sinker and it has the chrome wire. Those seem to be those ones that are wired all the way through. If they just have the brass wire on the top and the bottom, normally those are just the little tabs that are barely in there. So you want yeah. to avoid that. But you can. Every manufacturer is different. But the ones like at Fisherman's Landing, if they got the chrome all the way through them, uh, chrome wire, that means it's wired all the way through. And I guess if you're in question, you could rig the assist hooks uh, up top via eliminating correct the and weight as the middleman. Oh, right. I see. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. and and tie them to a ring. Correct. And then tie to your ring rather than the than, than the. So circuit. that all the tension is from ring to ring and not Correct. not. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. You, you I must mean, make lures or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that like stuff. That. Hey, um, uh, this is an interesting question, and no name, no phone number, so no trip for you. Uh, but I, I thought it was a good uh, a good, uh, and thank you for sending the text. But next time, make sure you put your phone number and your name, and then you're eligible for that trip. It says, hey guys, good morning. I I live in Topak, Arizona, and listen to your show on my phone. I have a 38-foot Mediterranean sport boat in Pedro. I need to find service that can get me permits to fish Mexican waters. Who would that be? Any ideas on that? Uh, everything's done online. Everything yep. we do is online. But a great resource is SAC. You right. can go to their website. Sport. If you Google Sport Fishing Association of California. It's CaliforniaSportFishing.org. Perfect. Yeah. And you could go there. It gives you all the websites from Mexican permits to the uh, uh, import 
permit, Mexican licenses, visas, everything you need to fish Mexico if you're fishing like the Coronado Islands. It's all in English. It translates for you. Uh, the new uh, visa is a little trickier, but when you get through it all once, it saves all your information. You pull it up again and just re- resubmit it and stuff yeah. like that. That would be your best um, a website that will tell you how to do it and very step by step. The Mexican fishing license, if you just need Mex, you're just going to Mexico and you already have your permit uh, and you need yearly California licenses or dailies or whatever H and M sells them. Uh, you could buy them. H and M sells a Mexican license. Yep. Oh, they do. Do they sell yearly ones there? And that's like sixty five, seventy bucks. I don't know what they sell them, but all our guys like, hey, I want. We used to sell them at the landing. Yeah. But since they went to the computerized system now, H and M sells them, and guys go down there. Take Takes them literally a couple minutes and, and then come back and it, saves us 17 bucks on our trip. And as long as it's not a Friday with 10 boats leaving and 100 people in the tackle shop, yeah. so the, the guys would be more than happy to direct you and help you. Oh, too. absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, guys call us all the time. Hey, how do I get this? And we just like tell them where to go on the website. And they everyone's been able to get it and figure out if I can do it, anyone can do it with yeah. the, the computer stuff. But, yeah. But don't expect that with 10 boats leaving and coming in. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I mean, that's At 7 o'clock on a Friday night, that I'll, won't happen. I'll speak for you. Yeah. But from Topak, <laughs> Arizona, of course, all online. So CaliforniaSportFishing.org, yep. you go to the Mexico tab at the top, and then everything you need there. So you will need, if you're fishing the Coronado or if you're fishing the Mexican waters, you do need a temporary implementation permit, yep. which is probably the most difficult of all of them to get. Uh, so you need that. You need a, a Mexican fishing license, mm-hmm. which is very simple. Very and easy. then if you're fishing the Coronado Islands, you need the FMM, yep. if you're fishing offshore, you do not need Correct. that. So yep. all you need is your temporary implementation mm-hmm. permit for the boat that lasts for 10 years and then uh, and then a fishing license, a Mexican yeah. fishing license, and that's it. Yeah, if you're fishing offshore, it's pretty easy. As soon yeah. as you get that uh, importation permit, you just need your Mexican fishing license, go fishing. It's yeah. pretty simple. Th- there mm. you go. All right, well, let's jump back on the phones. Let's do it, Pete. How about uh, Rich? Rich from Bradley. Good morning. Appreciate you joining us, Rich. Good morning and happy Easter. And happy uh, Easter. I'd like, I'd like, to, yeah, thanks. Um, maybe you could give me some insight about how how you like to handle the the fish once they get on board, and then and then uh, get them to your car and along with all your tackle without having uh, security issues with your with your tackle. We're really fortunate between the three landings down here that we have very little. Uh, incidents of theft or whatever but the crew members i regardless of what boat you if you need help getting your tackle to your car or uh your fish to your car uh you basically pull it up to the landing the crew members will help you load some of those bigger fish you know uh, into your car if you got a hundred pounder and stuff like that but most of the boats now i would say if the fish are over 60 pounds as soon as you get they get on the boat uh they bleed them they spike them then they gill and get all those bigger fish like that then when you get back up to the dock like the other day when we came out we had all those fish over 100 pounds we're not going to just here here's number 19 here's number three out of a dock cart uh we use the slab out in front of the fisherman's landing we'll lay out the cones with all the numbers and then we could pass out the fish that way it's much easier than trying to hand a guy a 90 pound or 130 pound fish we just sure. have everyone help unload the dock carts pass out all the fish onto the cones which are number proper uh, properly and then you can go from there then if you're having your fish processed from one of the processors uh go up to the processor hey my fish are ready to be picked up they handle it all after that you don't have to touch a fish after, right. as soon as they're at the cone but if you need help to get your fish from the cone or the slab to your car we ask you to pull your truck around and then we'll just help you load it up in the uh, your truck you know just ask one of the deckhands any of the deckhands on any of the boats would be more than happy to help you with that type of stuff. Because but one, uh, one word of caution, though, don't leave your gear. Don't leave uh, your gear. Yeah, and, um, and, and you have a locker. Correct. Like, if you want to go, like, if your gear is there and you want to go retrieve your car, just ask Fisherman's Landing to, to lock up your gear. And help you lock up your gear. Correct, and that's for coming and going. A lot of guys, yeah. like, on a busy, everyone knows how the parking is down here during the summer. Uh, the, the, we got rid of the, the, the guy that was at the gate there. Now you pay before you leave, um, and you, you could either use the app on your phone to pay, or you can use the kiosks. 
but which has really helped is it sucks that you have to pay for the parking lot across the street. Right. But the pain has actually helped get rid of all the people that were living in their cars and the RVs. Right. And that's yeah. you, you say it sucks, but it's a benefit. No, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's opened a, the parking up it's tremendously. Literally, it's probably added anywhere from 50 to 100 other spots down there. Yeah, and people so, were parking there and, 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 and walking to the airport or taking correct. a cab to the yeah, airport it's or really, whatever. It's, it's really yeah. helped the parking out during the Absolutely. summer. We haven't had many issues, but pull around. And use our locker. Yeah, and then and then and 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 then to, uh, uh, to have them use the locker, go yeah. retrieve your stuff, but do not leave your fishing gear unattended. Correct. Have someone watch it that was on the boat with you, or if you have your buddy, not a problem. Yeah, but even in a cart. Whatever. Yeah, but come in, park in front of the landing, come in, ask for locker number five. You throw all your stuff in there, go park your car. You don't have to worry about dragging it back and forth yeah. between the lots. And then when you're leaving, hey, I got to go get my car. Throw it in locker number five all the time. No they, problem. There you go. All right. That low opened up a line at 213-432-1090. Uh, you have a good one, huh, Corey? I do, yeah. I have a good text, and it comes from John in Rancho San Diego. And, John, thank you. Left his telephone number. He's, he wants that day-and-a-half trip on the Pacific Dawn, right? He says, uh, can't wait for a date to docks. He's super excited. He says, Carl, as a great... Greatest fisherman ever. <laughs> hey, well, that hey you chuckle, but you are, man. Come on, now you're right alongside Brandon. How about yeah, that? Yeah, there you go. He says, what are your personal best bluefin, yellowtail, and uh, and calico bass? And he says, thanks, a great show. Personal best yellowtail. I had a phenomenal day at Guadalupe Island one time, and this was while I was working on the Islander. I had... Four yellowtail between 45 and 55 pounds in a row. Oh my you know? Uh, oh, my. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, like, 55. I didn't weigh it on the scale, but it was probably a good 50, 55 pounder. Uh, that's my Jumbo. personal. My best bluefin is probably a 180-pound bluefin. Oh I, don't have, I don't have a 200-pound bluefin, believe it or yeah. not, but whatever. Uh, and calico. Kind of, Calico bass, um, probably at Cedros, I probably got an eight pounder. You know, I don't have Beautiful. a ten pound uh, calico. You know, but all that stuff is all on uh, jigs. Everything so, was on, on no jig. bait. No bait. No so, bait. Uh, the calico was, and this was a long time ago. Tim Green just had bought the Premier, I think, or maybe it was the last year he had the Fisherman Three, and fishing five tanks, fishing uh, either you or Danny. Wade maybe told me, both. I, maybe told me about caterpillar yellow. Oh uh, yeah. Well, well, caterpillar that's, yellow for what? For calico. For calico. Bass. Oh, you mean uh, plastic? No. Well, well, yes, but <laughs> yes. surface iron. Surface iron. Yeah. Surface iron. So in this case, I don't remember who told me, but like, oh, caterpillar. Had been Danny Wade, could but be. but I had a Taddy. He took a Taddy forty five. You got a caterpillar yellow, just like the engine. Like the actual yeah. engine color for cup spray painted that thing just like he told me, and that like it works. only thing I believe color makes a difference for it. anything it's else I don't, is for calico with that caterpillar yellow. Yeah, the only thing I believe in is definitely but, makes a difference. But it's weird because that same color works for yellows and calicos yeah. at Cedros. Yes, like it is a, a main color. So why it's over? Why yellow? What's what are the, is it a senorita fish or calicos? Think about it. It's yeah. it's it's something that's trying to blend in the kelp right. and it's the yeah. belly of something trying to blend it like imagine like a darker like you're saying senorita or yeah. darker yeah. like brown bait yeah. but they have a yellowish influence it's nice. and yeah. it's almost like they're flashing their giveaway belly you know what, at, yeah. what about a, a, a mc swim bait with a, with, that's yellow Do well, those work this this is going back to the Q105 days and skiff trips, <laughs> yeah. and I had my rear handed to me with slug fishing with bright yellow slugs. Like, really? I, I, I just I can't throw it, man. It's just, it's so unnatural. Yeah. But it works, and the it yellows works. yellows were yellows macking it. Oh, yeah, like crazy. crazy. Maybe it's something they can see very, very, but very yet key it's, in it's stand out, but yet natural for the kelp yep. area. Gotcha. And yeah. you and I had a day, yeah. and we were fishing on the inside of the kelp, Point Loma area, and yeah. we were fishing that caterpillar. Or that bright yellow uh, slug, eight inch slug. Yeah. And we had a really good day fishing. They smashed it. Oh yeah, smashed it. Yeah. yeah. We were fishing the stringers and. Yeah. We, Fun you know, stuff. We oh. tried to macro color it and that worked, but that yellow was game on. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, hopefully the kelp comes back so we can do that. I know yeah. it's crazy, yeah. right? The hardly any kelp out there. I know. Yeah. It's I a, know. Yeah. It'll come back. My my heart's Cycles. hurting. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, hey, we're gonna be right back on Let's Talk Cook Oven. Talk about more good stuff with uh, Carl Schmidt from Fisherman's Landing. We'll return on Let's Talk Cook About the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Everyone has their go-to fishing spot. My spot is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. Rock Cod Rick here to say. 
Wednesday, if you're looking for the ultimate Alaska experience and the best value in Alaska, it's Kingfisher Charters. Owner Seth Bone and his crew consistently deliver deluxe accommodations, the finest food, world-class fish processing, and top-of-the-line fishing experience. We've literally sent hundreds of our listeners to Kingfisher, and they all can't wait to go back. Most Alaska resorts make big promises, and they don't deliver, or they'll nickel and dime you to drive up the cost, but not Kingfisher. Everything is included. Your license, fish processing, super deluxe accommodations, amazing food, airport transfers, your gear, literally all you need to bring is your layer clothing, and Kingfisher covers the rest. They also have the finest boats and charter captains in Sitka, all for the ultimate value. Take it from me. Book your trip to Kingfisher Charters, and you'll thank me. Kingfisher Charters. 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedros Sport Fishing. We have always been the leader with all-inclusive fishing trips to Cedros Island. We now have two lodges to choose from and both sit on the cliff's edge with relaxing ocean views and gorgeous morning sunrises. With direct flights departing from the CBX in San Diego, we are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. Come check out the yellowtail and calico bass capital in the world. Nobody does it better than Cedros Sport Fishing. Call me at 619-772-7570 or check us out at cedrosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150. Available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150. Test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Day at the Docks is back Sunday, April 7th, and Fisherman's Landing Tackle will have our best booth ever. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our Day at the Docks booth, both in the shop and out in the parking lot, will feature the Shimano lineup of rods, reels, and lures, like Talica reels, Terramar rods, and current sniper lures. And as always, our expert staff at Fisherman's Landing Tackle will help you select that perfect Shimano setup. Day at the Docks and Fisherman's Landing Tackle, Sunday, April 7th. Great deals on Shimano. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up and having so much fun in the world headquarters yeah. talking all kinds of cool fishing, man. For sure. Uh, Captain Frank Lopresti's on the line. Hey. Good morning, Frank. Behave yourself. Good morning. Good happy Easter. Hey, happy yeah. Easter happy to Easter, you. Frank. You know, the bunnies are getting closer. The bunnies in the form of bluefin tuna. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Anyhow, I just wanted to report. I'm, I'm sure you've got some of it already. Roy's trip was absolutely fabulous. There was about 145 wahoo for the 17 anglers that were aboard, oh. and and uh, a beautiful catch of yellowfin tuna, uh, all the way up to 263 pounds. And then he topped it off on the way home with nine bluefin, all of 120 to 150. My so gosh. that was a great catch. Then Aliar on his uh, two-day trip. Uh, Ended up with 43 bluefin, 100 to 180 pounds, and they were they're just such gorgeous fish, Pete. And he got 16 of those fish on his way home. So there is fish coming closer, okay? Wow, that's that is incredible news. And speaking of the quality of fish, you gave me that chunk, that big chunk of bluefin tuna came off the Polaris Supreme, and I took it to Utah with Lolly's family, and it was like a bluefin feast. Those people that they had no idea how good that stuff. They they were like, I've never tasted anything like this. It's a it's definitely a cut above. They do a nice job with that fish. You know, Pete, uh, Fisherman's Processing does do a, a, a fabulous job, and the Supreme does a fabulous job of taking care of the fish. But the, some people that I gave some of that fish to invited me for sushi dinner, and I just couldn't believe it. First of all, it just look it sparkles on the plate, oh, yeah. and then it just tastes unbelievably delicious. It's so good. Oh yeah. Anyhow, that's my that's my report. 
uh, Royal Polaris leaves on an 18 tomorrow morning, and the Polaris Supreme leaves on a two-day, okay? Frank, what was it like unloading in that downpour yesterday, huh? You know, it wasn't bad, Pete. It rained a little bit, but it didn't downpour on us, you know? Okay, it, it so you got bad. it done the early. Hard rain, the hard rain came afterwards, yes. Okay, no, it wasn't good. bad at all. We got most of it done, and... And Jonathan and the crew got, uh, and Roy got uh, the boat all set, and uh, we're all set to go on the trip tomorrow morning. Okay. So are both Jonathan and Roy on that uh, on that trip, or is uh, is Roy getting yeah. a little time off? No, Roy doesn't want time off right now. He wants to go. This is a, one of the favorite trips of the year, and and Roy and Jonathan are both going to be on it. Roy will be running the boat. Jonathan will be on deck, and uh, and then when they get back, I'm sure Roy's going to tell you. You know, maintenance is not one of Roy's favorite time, so, uh, so uh, I'm sure he's going to take a fair amount of time off then, okay? So after this 18, then you go into your uh, like month-long maintenance period, right? All the way to, I think it's June 3rd, something like that, yes. Okay. It, it, it's about 42 days. All right, and a lot, lot 40, to do? 42, 42 days of hell, and you know, i gotta, I got to point out, you you got to... I, I don't know if you know how much work Drew has done on that Pacific Queen, and he has spent an absolute fortune. But they have got two beautiful fish holds. They put on a big bait tank. I think they want to compete with the Independence bait carrying capacity. <laughs> it, it, it was just amazing. And then, and then the, probably one of the toughest parts is watching him have to go through a stability test, which was really completely unnecessary according to the Marine architect. But our federal laws are their federal laws and they sat there putting these big weights on the boat for six hours and it that little deal alone cost drew twenty thousand dollars oh come gosh. on yeah how Crazy. ridiculous yep so yeah yep yep yeah. well that's you know some of our passengers don't realize what our guys go through in maintenance i mean it's it, it and the amount of maintenance he did this year on that boat and on the Pegasus, I mean, new machinery, it's insane. I, I'm surprised he's still married, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so this, those boats, uh, Pacific Queen and the and the Pegasus, are dialed and ready to go. They're both ready, yeah. yeah. Beautiful work they do. <laughs> yes, they are. That's great. Well, Frank, right. thanks for the Let check. Happy Easter to you and Kathy, and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Take care. All right. Thanks. All right. Let's uh, have let's get on with the catch report. I know. If that wasn't yeah. enough, right? We got yeah. Brian Woolley waiting, and it's brought to us by Norsk Lithium Batteries, and they're here designed specifically for marine use. Norsk Lithium features prismatic sails for extreme durability, solid connections, longevity, and reliability. The Norsk Guardian Advanced Battery Management System allows you to monitor the uh, health and charging status by using their app on on your phone. It's super cool. It's easy. It's God, I, I, I mean, battery systems yeah. have just come so far, and Norsk also makes a complete line of kayak and electric reel batteries that weigh less than three pounds. Make an investment in the best for your boat with Norsk Lithium. Check NorskLithium.com, or go see the uh, trolley motor doctor in L.A. or uh, Angler's Marine for the Norsk Lithium batteries. And Angler's Marine now both in Anaheim as well as Lakeside have the Norsk oh, Lithium really? batteries. Oh, really? Okay. So if, you want, if down in San Diego you want to get some. Norse. That's a big deal. They have them. And, and I might add to that that uh, kayak or uh, electric reel battery that they yes. have that weighs less like three pounds. I have one of those, and I can't, with rockfish season opening tomorrow, I can't, can't wait, wait to go out and use that. No, be nice. You just strap it to your uh, your side or just uh, have it have a little backpack, and you're walking around with electric reel and uh, Pete, fishing that deep water. <laughs> you can't see Pete, but he's rubbing his hands yeah. together and uh, grinning with a smile. And right. I'll bet... Brian Woolley is too, right, yeah. Woolley? Good morning, Brian. Good morning. All right. Good morning, guys. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. You know, I was I was hoping to talk to Laos, but you know, he's, he's at home playing Easter Bunny. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, keeping those kids happy. And you know, his wife's a captain here in Dana Point too, baby, out of Harbor. So we we know who's in charge of that ship at the Laos house. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Brian giving it all up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's cool. Laos started at Dana Wharf. I don't know if you guys knew that. Laos started here at Dana Wharf. We worked on the, the Sun Fun with Pika and I, and so, so did Bradley as deckhand. I used to pick Bradley up to come pinhead with us on the Sun Fun back in the day, too. Wow. So, some good times with, with those guys, for sure. So yeah, it's awesome to see them and their, their success, for sure. So For sure. Hey. 
for us here, another decent week of fishing. You know, we had a few slower days, but, uh, you know, that's okay as we kind of roll into April here with plenty of new opportunity on the table here for us. So, half day fishing this week, it, you know, consisted more of bass fishing with most of the action, again, kind of coming off the sinker setups at the bottom of Carolina rigs, reverse dropper loops, slab cut baits, got the uh, the bites there for the guys fishing for the sand bass. No shortage of sheephead. Those guys on the shrimp baits did just fine catching their sheephead. And the water was a bit fickle for us this week. You know, we've been so spoiled with that solid 60-degree water. This week was like 57 to 59, and it was kind of off color, not not the best looking with not a lot of current or anything. So the calico bass fishing, as you can imagine, was a little bit slower as the result of, of some of that for our half-day guys. Uh, three-quarter day was, you know, again, on the sculpin, easy five fish limits for those guys on the swim bait and the twin tail lures fished on the dropper loop. To say that we're stoked for tomorrow is certainly an understatement. We're uh, definitely looking forward to that. And I'd imagine that rockfish is going to be all over the live bait. It's going to be all over those sniper-style jigs. So come prepared with some of that stuff if you're fishing with us uh, from here on out. Uh, 100, 200 gram sniper jigs and like that uh, Katy Perry color, that pink and blue have been phenomenal. Green is always a good color. Um, the Fury, he has a few spots left on his uh, overnight, leaving tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Fishing a Clemente. And I do believe we still have a few spots open for tomorrow on our new San Mateo. That's that Delta. He's running a uh, extended three-quarter day, limited to 12 anglers. I think it's mm. like $169 if you want to fish on that with 12 guys. So wow. that should be really good, too. And I think this is the key thing that we need to get out there is just remember these new regs. If you're on your own boat, make sure you have that descending device on your boat. And the go-to spot for the regs is going to be the Fishing Games website. They even have on their own website that the new ground fish regulations for 2024 have been adopted, right, by the Office of Administrative Review, but they just need to go through that review. And until those are approved, the 2023 regs, okay, posted on their website, remain in effect. So keep track of what's going on. The the burden is on you as the angler to to make sure you know where you're at and what you're doing. But uh, that website, the Fishing Games website, which you can link right there to the Let's Talk Cookup page. I checked this morning and saw that link there. Um, make sure you have that all up to date and you're good to go on that stuff. So That's so cleanly said, yes, Brian. Yes, very well mm-hmm. said. And and that I'm, I'm going to do a little political statement here. That yeah. ridiculous thing that they did to Vermilion Rockfish, which is, as we all know, is very, very plentiful to, to lower that limit from four to two This uh, with these new regulations. is it's, it's, 100%. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough deal if you've been involved in some of that management stuff it's it's a give and take right it's it's a give and take i'm certainly wish we could keep before but some of the take that we might have potentially had to give up would have maybe been worse than two fish you know what i'm saying so it's just the best thing i can say is just make sure you're up on your regs so that they don't say see this is why we want to do it the way we want to do it so yeah for sure don't give an opportunity to, to board you and cite you keep your stuff crossed and you're all good to go but there's plenty of other species that you can catch and uh, get your limits, right? There really is. There's there's plenty of opportunity, especially with the depth being open. You can go fish 14. You can get in that deeper water and do what you need to do. Just have the gear on the boat that you need to have and just play by the rules and everything will be fine. So and still being allowed 10 fish and a lot of those fish from like the 14. I mean, I've seen from like Eric Landis fine, like private boat fishing. It is ridiculous. The size of the Floridas and the, like everything's over three pounds. Right. It's yeah. crazy. Big bankies, big chilies. Like, yeah, there's, there's like no need to. Three yeah, to five sure. pound average for your 10 fish. Just add that up. I yeah, mean, a yeah. 30 to 50 pound limit. Like just make sure you have a good photo picture of uh, the, all, how, what they look like so that you can identify them. Some, some of them look like pretty, Pretty similar, but yeah. just make sure you do positive identification yeah. on the fish that you keep, because some just of them know are your stuff. Similar. Yeah, yeah that's right. Got to, got to know, so. got to know your regulations, because I guarantee you the the game warden will get on <laughs> get online and look at what what a red looks like versus a Mexican, and just yeah. like so you know, like it's get a refresh your mind what everything is, yeah. and you'll be fine, you know. Now, also with uh, the cow conservation uh, zones, like the forty three being open, yeah. how's that going to change your game plan at Dana Wharf? Is that kind of within your zone? Um, I don't, you know, I don't know what those guys on the overnights are going to do and how they're going to change and, and adapt to some of that stuff. You know, what's in play within our range will certainly be a new option. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes into their game plans. In fact, as I know, Marcus on the Fury is going to start at Colmeny. You know, he's going to 
fish is caught there, then look around for some game fish and see what happens there. And, you know, I guess as the fleet gets out and we get some coverage and some reports back, that will kind of dictate where they go. I will say this, too. I forgot to throw this in there. You guys I heard you Carl talking about airplane flying this week. I know that the Catalina Express boat coming back from Avalon to Dana Point has seen bluefin two different times in the last oh, 10 days. I know. Oh, oh, so, Brian, I will throw up. that out there. So, That's cool. Getting the report from yeah. the, the Catalina Express. <laughs> right? There they it are. Helps, right? It yeah. helps guys that are crossing zones that we don't cross this time of the year. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Good stuff. Wow, yeah, well, really good stuff. Well, if somebody wants to come to Dana Wharf and jump on that rock, th- happy April Fool's Day tomorrow, which is a happy day for anglers. Right. Sure. <laughs> right. Give, give us a call here at number 949-496-5794. First, you can check us at danawharf.com. And, uh, yeah, give us a shot. We'd love to get you guys out there with us this next week. There's an awesome family-run business up there, Brian, and we appreciate your report every week, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Have a great day today. We'll see you later. Man, and happy cra- Easter. Right? And a crazy a crazy report. And we're yeah. going to be right back. And I think we've got the man on the line, right, from the Pacific Dawn? Uh, actually, we have Mike Lum on the line. But oh, is it Mike? from that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be right back. On Let's Talk Cook About the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Back in 1979, my parents started Fast Lane Sailing Center. They lived in a VW van in the parking lot and sold catamaran sailboats. And over the years, the shop has evolved. They've sold everything from windsurfers to barbecues, paddle boards, and trailers. Here's the point. For over 40 years, my parents, and eventually me, my brother Jared, and sister Ava, have been in the business of fun and making memories on the water with friends and family. If something's in the shop, it's a product we use, are passionate, and knowledgeable about, and want to share with you. We encourage you to come down to our shop, Fast Lane Kayaking, on Mission Bay, and check out our huge selection of Hobie Mirage kayaks, accessories, and more. Now let's get you on the water, fishing with friends, enjoying the coast with your family, or exploring mountain lakes in solitude. In other words, having fun and making memories. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150. Available with a Pro Power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150. Test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up.